This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the Renton Seventh-day Adventist Church. Happy Sabbath. What a pleasure it is to be a part of our church family. We invite you to join us. Experience the Comforter and friends and the warm fellowship of our members. Our mission is to glorify God in love and worship through songs of praise, to love one another, to develop and teach the saints, to encourage and edify the church and surrender to a sovereign God. Let's worship the Lord our God today. Heavenly Father, thank you again for another week of life. Thank you for the lessons that you have given us throughout this week. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Please now be with us as we study this lesson, as we finish this quarter. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, welcome to Sabbath School. This is the close of this quarter in looking at the Psalms. And lesson 13 deals with wait on the Lord. Keith, have you noticed that just about everything in life, there's a wait or a pause for things? And also for the second coming. And we're going to look at the salvation that humanity waited on and the second coming that we're waiting on right now. So, Keith, let's go ahead and look at the memory verse. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. My complimentary text is found in Psalm 62, 5 through 7. It says, my soul wait, thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. In um, Ellen G. White's notes, it says in pay, on page 89, it says, many, even in their seasons of devotion, felt of receiving the blessing of real communion with God. They are too great haste with hurried steps. They press through the circle of Christ's loving presence, pausing perhaps a moment within the sacred precincts, but not waiting for counsel. They have no time to remain with the divine teacher. With their burdens, they return to their work. Not a pause for a moment in this presence, in his presence, but personal contact with Christ to sit down in companionship with him. This is our need. You know, I find waiting to be very valuable. Um, you can miss a lot of stuff when you're in a great hurry. Yes. Okay. Um, this last paragraph at the bottom for Sabbath Waiting on the Lord is not an idle and desperate bidding of one's time. Instead, waiting on the Lord is an act full of trust and faith. Trust and faith revealed in action. Waiting on the Lord transforms our gloomy evenings with the expectancy of the bright morning. It strengthens our heart with renewed hope and peace. It motivates us to work harder, bringing in the sheaves of plentiful harvest um, from the Lord's mission fields, waiting on the Lord will never put us to shame, but will, be, but will be richly rewarded because the Lord is faithful to all his promises. Uh, uh, there's a lot of times where we need to wait on the promises of God, but he, I've noticed that when I wait, there's always a, a um, answer in the end, you know, um, and, and a lot of times, the journey in the waiting becomes more valuable than the answer itself. Amen. Okay. Amen. So let's go to uh, Sunday. Before we get Sunday, I want to just read this quote out of okay. um, Desire of Ages. It says, 
For 6,000 years, faith has built it upon Christ. For 6,000 years, the floods and tempests of satanic wrath have beaten upon the rock of our salvation, but it stands unmoved. Amen. His, his purpose for the salvation of humanity has, for us, taken a considerable amount of time. But each step of the way, the promise has been fulfilled that we will be redeemed by our Savior. Amen. And that gives me hope that all the promises have been fulfilled, almost all of them, that his last promise of eradicating sin altogether is also going to happen. Amen. So we're going to look at, I think we just read Psalms 27, 14, right? Um, you got something on that, Keith, or did you already yes, read that? Yes, I have a complimentary text on 2714. It's found in Job, the 22nd chapter, verses 22, 21 and 22. It says, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thine heart. When the mind of man is brought into communion with the mind of God, the infinite with the finite, the, the finite with the infinite, the effect on body and mind and soul is beyond estimate. In such communion is found the highest education. It is God's own method of development. Okay. Um. Do you think waiting um, develops character? Yes, yes. Yeah? We must have patience. Yeah. That's what the Rome, uh, Revelation uh, 14, 12 says. Here is the patience of the saints. How, how does impatience look? When you won't wait on God. Yeah, I mean, how, how does it look? It's, it's um, kind of irritating, you know, mm -hmm. watching somebody impatient or... Yeah. Um, it, it becomes dangerous. I notice in traffic, if you find people impatient, it becomes dangerous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we have examples of that. Moses was an impatient. He struck the rock when he should have spoken to it. Yeah. You know, um, the, uh, 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 Jonah was impatient. He went and tried to run away from God, and God caught him up with him, and he had to do what the Lord had asked him to do in the first place. I noticed impatience this week can put you into an area where God might not want you to be. And he, 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 practicing his patience also places you in an area that he might want you to be. Right. Right? Okay, so I got here, um, the notion of waiting on the Lord is found not only in the Psalms, but abounds all through the Bible. And you were saying that. The operative word in all this is perseverance. Perseverance is our supreme commitment of refusing to succumb to fear of disappointment that somehow God will not come through for us. God's devoted child waits knowing with certainty that God is faithful and those who wait on him can trust that if we leave our situation to him, we can be sure that he will work it out for our best even if at the same time we don't necessarily see it that way, right? Yes. So I found that, and more so now, that waiting on the Lord, and that doesn't mean like um, um, that I'm idle, just sitting on the couch waiting for something to happen. There's actually movement going on, thought going on, and so forth. Down here at the bottom it says, what are some of the things you are waiting for now from God? How do we learn to wait in faith and in trust, especially when what we are praying for has, hasn't come yet. Anything you got going on that you're waiting on, Keith? Well, you know, I like to answer these questions with a Bible text. So Colossians 1.27, that God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery unto the Gentiles, which is Christ in you and in me, our hope of glory. Mm. I have a, um, I've been challenged with trying to understand what the purpose of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is in these times. What's our mission? What's my mission? 
So in the process of this question, I'm waiting for answers from God. But what I do while I'm waiting is I search the scriptures, I read Ellen White's writings, I seek counsel from people I find spiritual, I pray, um, and in the process, I'm starting to receive information from God on um, what the Seventh-day Adventist Church's purpose is in these times. The beatitude has come to my mind. Um, we read a little bit this morning about uh, the character that God is developing in us is coming to mind, scripture is coming to mind, and developing an answer to my prayer. It takes a little bit of time, but the waiting is beneficial, right? Okay, so that's, that's how I'm, that, that's the prayer that I'm asking right now and the process in which I'm, I'm dealing with. And there's, there's all kinds of things that, um, life challenges that we need to wait on, a, a, a job that we're thinking about that we would like to have, um, finances that we need deliverance from, character flaws. We need to wait on God. His promise is that I am with you and that he, will, he has the solutions. Um, and so we wait on him by being a little bit busy, right? But try not to go ahead of him. Try not to stay behind him. You know, try to stay with him on it. Okay, so... Let's go to Monday, peace of a weaned child, Psalms 131. Keith, would you read that? I have a complimentary text to that, and it kind of explains a little bit more. <clears throat> uh, Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where, where to I sent it. So what does the Psalms teach us about our relationship with God? It teaches us to be patient, like you were saying, uh, Elder, and it teaches us to wait on the Lord, as the title of our, our lessons started out. And I want to read from uh, Ellen G. White's notes, page 92, it says, <clears throat> God brings his people near him by close testing trials, by showing them their own weakness and inability, and by teaching them to lean upon him as their only help and safeguard. Then his object is accomplished. They are prepared to be used in every emergency to fill important positions of trust and to accomplish the grand purposes for which their powers were given them. God takes men upon trial. He proves them on the right hand and on the left, and thus they are educated, trained, disciplined. Jesus, our Redeemer, man's representative and head, endured the testing process. He suffered more then we can be called upon to suffer. And now, reviving on his merits our over, of our overcomer, we may become victors in his name. Okay, and uh, Psalms 131.3, personal victory becomes a pattern for all Israel to follow. When you think about peace of a weaned child, um, that child's being developed in a young age to um, hopefully teaching him to have patience, to listen to you, to find respect. Um, the things that are profitable to society, you wanna teach that child at a young age. If you're not weaning that child, then, and the child is left up to his own thoughts and his own desires and stuff like that, man, you can have some problems with that kid, right? Yes. Um, so peace of a wean child, when, when God teaches us to wait patiently on him, developing that faith, I believe we can find peace in knowing that God is um, hearing you, working in your life. Um, one thing for sure is we can have peace in his salvation because he's already accomplished that. So this is what I look at, peace in a wean child. For a Christian, 
we can be an adult and God can wean us from um, the society that's in our life, mm -hmm. you know, the things that we've learned that are contrary to God. Yeah. He can wean us from that and teach us to have peace with him. Go ahead. The scriptures also say, Elder, is that unless we become as little children, we shall not see the kingdom of God. That comes with humility. We must be humble enough to listen to what God has instructed us to do through his word. Um, Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 5, it says, At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him at the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greater in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive uh, one such little child in my name receiveth me. So how does that look as an adult, Keith, to be like this little child? Because the question is, what is Jesus saying here to us? What does this idea entail? And that's that verse that you just read. Right. He's our father. We, we humble ourselves to our, to our, our parents he is our parent. He is our example in everything, in every facets of life. And if we don't humble ourselves to uh, accept his infinity with our finite minds, then we're lost. Okay. We're lost. I, I see that. Um, we are to trust in Christ, live his life in humbleness, be converted for the from a worldly standard to live by, um, by heaven's ways. We are not called to love the ways of the world, but to love those in the world. That's, yeah. that's what I got out of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so peace of a weaned child. And I think that that process from the day we're born, God works that process in us to trust him, um, to be to be his child, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I notice with children, there's a lot of things that my kids um, have Shamus's character and my character in them. The things that we taught them as we were raising them um, comes into them, and, and I think God wants to do that with us. So bringing in the sheaves, we're gonna look at that. Keith, you have some thoughts on that. Psalms mm -hmm. 126, I'd like to read that. That's a short one. If that's um, something we can do. Verse 126, um, the complimentary text to that can be found in verse 6. A popular hymn from the 19th century called Bringing in the Sheaves. In fact, that's our opening song today uh, for our 11 o'clock hour. Made use of this imagery to encourage the believers to share the gospel, to bring the sheaves, refers to the idea that one day believers will come before the Lord, bringing others with them with whom they shared the gospel. Okay, Psalms 126. I'm going to ask the question, what gives strength and hope to God's people? What is being said here in the context that we can apply to our own lives. And I'm, I'm thinking, I think one of the comments in here was, you look at the evangelist, um, um, even the gentlemen that are gonna sing here today, um, you look Amen. to the preacher, you look to um, missionaries, and sometimes the, the mission field looks kind of bleak. I mean, you're spending your life, you're working trying to spread this gospel, and, um, Sometimes you just don't see anything happening right away. And what Psalms 126 is implying is that you just need to wait on the Lord to um, nurture your work, nurture the seeds that you're planting, 
And, and then later on, you'll see lives changed because of what you have done. God doesn't waste anything we do for him. He'll, he'll use it to the benefit of those around us who we're serving and to his glory, yes. right? Yes. That's, that's what I saw in this, this uh, uh, Psalms 126. Um, here, notice that the generation that praises the Lord in Psalms 126 for his past deliverance of his people from captivity is presently in captivity, yet the past joy and relief are relieved through songs of appropriate in present experience. The new generation keeps building history alive, con continuing themselves as present among those who saw the events firsthand. Thus, a living faith cherishes God's great deeds for his people in, the lo in that the Lord did only for them the past generation believers. So what God has done in the past <clears throat> for his children, he'll also do for his children here and now. And we can have uh, peace in that uh, God delivered them, God will deliver us. Dwell on some items when you, uh, when you clearly and unmistakably saw the Lord working in your life or in the lives of others. How can you draw hope from those experiences for whatever you might be going through now. So if there's anybody out there that has had some experiences that you unmistakably know that God was working in your life in those areas, please share. Keith, do you have anything? Well, I can only talk about how God has delivered me out of such gross darkness and brought me into his marvelous light. And by hearing testimonies of lives coming out of such gross darkness, um, that we have the opportunity in, to change our lives. By beholding Christ, we can become changed to be able to accept what is offered to us, and that is salvation, eternal life. The, the plan of salvation, when you continue to study in it and continue to seek answers in it, it just gets more and more beautiful, yeah. right? Um, I know I've been in prayer here for 20 years, and I've seen so many answers to prayer to um, people who have come and prayed. Um, I've seen cancer healed. I've seen um, lives um, restored, um, um, relationships changed. In, in the 20 years, I mean, so many things that um, I know God is working in the lives of every individual, right? Mm -hmm. And the more we study, the more we see that God is involved in each life. Whether somebody um, acknowledges it or not, God is involved in it, Amen. right? Amen. It is God in whom we must trust. God has the world in his hand. We have God on our side. All heaven is waiting and longing for our cooperation. The Lord is supreme. Why then should we fear? The Lord is almighty. Why should we tremble? In the past, God has delivered his people and he will be our helper if we will arise in, the, in his strength and go forward. Let us work as we have never done before. Let us put self aside and lay hold of Jesus Christ by faith. Let us reveal him to the world as the one altogether lovely and the chiefest among 10,000. You know, with this faith, it, it's, I think it's like automatically God will use that to help others know him through your life. You know, I think you just, faith in Jesus Christ makes you a missionary in one way or another. You don't have to go to a foreign land to work for Jesus Christ, your life will reflect that, yeah. right? right? As long as that faith continues to grow, uh, you'll be a witness for Jesus Christ. Um, looking at Wednesday here, Keith, uh, we're moving along pretty good. Psalms 92. Uh, let's take a look at that. I'd like to read those first two verses. Matter of fact, we have time to read the whole thing if you want to. Okay. What two aspects of the Sabbath day are highlighted in this song for the Sabbath day. This was a good study. The first two verses I just really appreciated. It is a good thing 
to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and in thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the palstry, upon the harp, and, a, and the solemn sound. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. God's palm tree, beaten by the scorching sun and the fierce sandstorm, stands green and flourishing and fruitful in the midst of the desert. The tree of the desert is a symbol of what God means the life of his children in the life of his children in this world to be. They are to guide weary souls full of unrest and ready to perish in the desert of sin to the living water of life. When all it's all positive, right? Everything with God is positive. When I looked at these two, first two verses, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. <clears throat> now, if you, don't, if you don't know the Lord, I mean, how do you give thanks to the Lord? It says it is good to give thanks to the Lord. I, I think you're having something going on with you and the Lord to be able to do that. Yeah. There's a recognition going on. And then it says, <clears throat> and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, and that's what we're going to do today. And to declare, this is the verse two that, that really um, was interesting to me. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Now, I look at the sacrifices in the temple, and there was morning and evening sacrifices, right? So now he's looking at morning and evening prayer. And first thing in the morning, you... Um, I think it talks about your first breath is to acknowledging God's loving kindness, right? He carried you through the night, and you're alive the next morning, so your first thought would be, oh, thank you, God. You know, you're breathing a prayer of thanksgiving for his loving kindness. And then at the end of the day, as, as you've uh, battled the day, as you've carried on through the day, then there's, uh, you're looking at Christ and his faithfulness for keeping you throughout the day, right? And do you lose that if, if, let's say, you have an accident or something goes on? You just don't lose it because you're connected with God. You're, right. you're thankful in the morning, and you're, you're praising him for his faithfulness at, in the evening, okay? Yeah. Well, this is what he admonished the children of Israel to do um, when he brought them out of Egypt. In Deuteronomy, the seventh, the sixth chapter, verses of four through uh, eight, it says... Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is one, Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children. Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them as a sign or a seal upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them on the doorposts of thy house and on thy gates. As a preparation for teaching the precepts of God's commands, and they, that they should be hidden in the hearts of the parents, in order, for, in order to interest our children in the Bible, we ourselves must be interested in it. To awaken in them a love for its study, we should love it. Our instruction to them will have only the weight of influence given it by our own example and spirit. So the study, in other words, <clears throat> should change our lives also. Yes. <clears throat> and we should follow the examples of the Word of God. The waiting in God's, in God's Sabbath rest. So I'm going to read this first paragraph here, 
And uh, it'll start uh, showing us how valuable the Sabbath is. Mm -hmm. um, the praise of God for the uh, the praise of God for the great works of His hand, uh, Psalms 92, 4 and 5, and the Eden-like portrayal of the righteousness, Psalms 92, 12 and 14, clearly point to creation. The first aspect that the Sabbath commemorates. The Psalm also magnifies the Lord for His victory over enemies as the God of justice, Psalms 92, 7 through 15, and so reinforces the second Sabbath theme, redemption from evil, Deuteronomy 5, 12, and 15. Thus, Psalms 92 extols God for his past creation and the present sustaining of the world, and it points to the end-time hope and eternal divine peace and order. So the Sabbath is, I mean, it's so much more than just the seventh day rest. There's a lot involved with the Sabbath day. And I have a sense that through all of creation, it's going to be a reminder of this experience that we've had and the character and the love of God and how he's delivered us. Yes. Right? I'd like to make a point before we go any further. This is about worship. We are to honor and keep holy the Sabbath here if we expect to live and honor the Sabbath in heaven. Isaiah, the 66th chapter, verse 22, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me. The Sabbath was embodied in the law given by, from Sinai, but it was not then first made known as a day of rest. The people of Israel had a knowledge of it before they came to Sinai. On the way thither, the Sabbath was kept. When some profane it, the Lord reproved them, saying, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? The Sabbath was not for Israel merely, but for the world. It had been made known to man in Eden. And like the other precepts of the Decalogue, it is imperishable. It is of imperishable obligation. Of that law of which the fourth commandment forms a part, Christ declares, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So long as the heavens and the earth endure, the Sabbath will, be, will continue as a sign of the Creator's power. And when Eden shall bloom on earth again, God's holy rest day will be honored by all beneath the sun. From one Sabbath to another, the inhabitants of the glorified new earth shall go up to worship before me, saith the Lord. Amen. That, you know, when you make a study on the Sabbath and, and are serious about it, I mean, it just blossoms. It's, there's so much involved with it, uh, more than just this day of rest, you know. Um, though, as, as I first came into understanding the Sabbath, okay, a day of rest, okay, I stop work and stuff like that, but... Um, and that's all good, but, but it's more than that. We can rest in the hope of our salvation, that, that God is um, not going to give up on us, right? He didn't come down from the cross. He, he actually fulfilled the purpose, and, and then he rested from his work in our redemption. And, and so the Sabbath looks at creation and it looks at redemption. I mean, there is so much involved in it for us and revealing his character. Um, uh, it says, read through Psalms 92 again. What great hope is offered to us there and how can we even right now take comfort in what it says? And I put down here, God's loving kindness is with us in the morning and throughout the day. We see by the end of the day, he has been faithful to us. If we keep our eyes on God from sunup to sundown, we can see our salvation in him. When our eyes are on God, 
from sunup to sundown, it, it is not so much concentrating on the challenges that we have every day, but it concentrates on the one who can bring us through these challenges. That's, that's what I love about, about God. He's, he goes with us in the storms and in the challenges of life. And we keep our eyes on him. Um, and the Sabbath is a reminder of that. We keep our eyes on him that he is our deliverer from all these challenges. And, and one of the big challenges that I find is death. Um, when those moments come where death is knocking on the door, we keep our eyes on God and he can give us, like we were studying with the peace, he gives us peace through those challenges. Amen. Um, come, uh, joy comes in the morning. Let's take a look at that, Keith. You had a Psalms in there you wanted to read. Was it Psalms 5-3? <clears throat> joy cometh in the morning. Yeah. Um, I had one. Uh, let's see. Psalm 72-5. Okay. This is my complimentary text. I'm going to read Psalms 5-3 while you look at that. Um, my voice, okay, the question is, um, what time of day is symbolically portrayed at the time of divine redemption and why? Uh, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. Okay, go ahead, Keith. <clears throat> You know, when you read these psalms, you really got to study them out a little bit. And, man, it just, it just has so much more meaning when you look at the references in the Bible for these psalms and, and what he's talking about, like, in the morning. Do you have it, Keith? Yeah. Okay. Psalms 72, 5 and 6. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass and showers of that water, the earth. Um, we'd look for the former and the latter rain, uh, that joy cometh in the morning. Um, the doctrine shall drop as the uh, rain, my speech shall distill as the dew and as the small rain upon the tender heart herb as the showers upon the grass. Um, we as uh, children of God are sowers of seed and we depend upon God's showers of blessings to germinate that seed so that it comes to fruition and that we can bring the gospel message to souls and that's what the bringing in the sheaves is that we studied before, um, they, they will be uh, enriched by our giving them the, salve, the salific work of Jesus Christ in their lives. Amen. I turn to uh, Psalms 30, uh, 5, and it goes, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for, for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. <clears throat> when I looked at that, I don't know, have you um, ever had some really challenging times where you were just consumed by what to do? Um, you don't see any solution at all. And when it talks about for his anger is but for a moment, it's not that God brings challenges upon us. I think he allows them to happen, but it just seems like it's dark, like, like there's no light, like you can't, you can't figure a way out of it. Um, and then his favor is for life, that God, even with the challenges, God's favor is for our lives, for a better life, for eternal life. And when it goes, weeping may endure for a night, that challenge, that darkness is over us and we're trying to figure it out, but joy comes in the morning. And then a solution comes. And, and then the light turns on and you're delivered from whatever challenge you have. When the disciples were in the boat, 
going from one side of the lake to the other. This storm came up and they thought they were going to die. And Jesus Christ was in the boat with them. Right. But they lost sight of that. And all they focused on was the storm. And they came to a conclusion that there was no way out of this. Then they realized that Jesus was in the boat and they cried to him, Lord, save us. Christ lifts up his hands and says, peace be still, and the whole thing disappears, just yeah. like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Our faith should be in that Redeemer. Through the storms, we should be able to have peace and, and um, hang on to the fact that Jesus is with us in the catastrophe, right? Yes. That, that'll give us more peace. I know it's hard to uh, turn away from something that you just can't figure out. We've become so dependent upon ourselves. Um, but I think God in this moment here, joy comes in the morning, is asking us, understand that I'm with you, that you can hold on to me through the storm. And we're talking about waiting on the Lord, mm -hmm. right? And wait and let me work out that situation, okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Faith in God's love and overruling providence lightens the burdens of anxiety and care. It fills the heart with joy and contentment in the highest or the lowest lot. Religion tends to directly to promote health, to lengthen life, and to heighten the enjoyment of all its blessings. It opens the soul as never failing fountains of happiness. Would that all who have not chosen Christ might realize that he has something vastly better to offer them that they are seeking for themselves. The path of transgression leads to misery and destruction, but wisdom's ways are ways of pleasantness, and all their paths are peace. Amen. For every human being, this last final question here, for every human being, we have to face death. It's inevitable. You have birth, you have death in a, in a world of sin. And it says here that um, why must we never forget just how temporal death is for us? Mm -hmm. um, I got down here. When we see Jesus as our Redeemer, mm -hmm. as our life giver, we don't have to be consumed by death right. and, the, and, and the temporal reality of it. Yeah. Um, we can... Um, have a spirit of thankfulness <clears throat> that it's only for a moment. Amen. And that Jesus Christ is give, has given us the promise of eternal life with Amen. him, right? Right. Did okay. you want 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. You've got eight. So um, this lesson to me is like um, wait on the Lord for everything that happens in our life. Just wait on him. And if death is coming up, knocking on your door, don't fear God has a solution for that too. That's what the cross was all about, is that he has the solution. When he died, there was hope that came right after that, right? Okay. So with this quarterly, that's coming to a close. Next quarter, we're going to be studying on the great controversy, right? Yes. That's going to be the next quarter. There are quarterlies out there. If you don't have a quarterly, the church provides quarterlies. Pick one up. The one important thing about this lesson is not coming here listening to Keith and I. We're just telling you what we've discovered in this. You've come to listen, and maybe you've come for other reasons too, but um, the value is studying out these questions, right? This is a s systematic study. There are other questions outside of the quarterly that you might have that this quarterly teaches you how to discover stuff, okay? That, that is the one main thing that I believe Sabbath school is so important is that you learn to grow in this confidence with God. You learn to understand his love for you and, and how he can live with you um, in your daily life activities, right? Through the challenges and through the joys. That's what I find important for the quarters, quarterly study and Sabbath school class. It's not just church. It carries you throughout the whole week. The, the, oh, I got something to read to you. Ah, because my um, mind doesn't work like many others. 
David gave me something to read. Actually, I chose to read it. So, because I want to get it all to you. This is our last panel that is going to be up front like this. Um, we're going to be changing over to something else, so let me read it to you. Uh, next week, April 6th, our Sabbath school time will be spent with Pastor Bill Payne of the Voice of Prophecy. So our first quarter is going to be um, presented uh, by Bill, and um, he's going to be actually here. Uh, let me go a little bit further. Dr. Bill Payne is the director of Bible school for the Voice of Prophecy. Pastor Payne speaks on the importance of the call that God places on all of us, how will you answer when God calls you? He's going to be um, here Friday, and I, th I know we're going to talk about it a little bit more, but he'll be Friday, and he'll be here Saturday morning and throughout the Saturday worship also. And Sabbath afternoon. And Sabbath afternoon, right. And something you really want to come and, come and see, okay? And then the following week after that, the 13th, Starting April 13th, we will have a modified format for Sabbath school. It will be more interactive with one class here in the sanctuary. So we'll be going back to what we did in 2000 prior to COVID. We'll be having a class here in the sanctuary. It'll be interactive in that format instead of what's up here. And I remember when we did that, we always had a lot of discussion. So that's really good. I really miss that. We have six or seven teachers that will facilitate that. There'll be a, a schedule up on the board for the teachers that will be teaching that Sabbath. And we're gonna do that for this next quarter. And then we'll see what happens after that as far as teaching classes go and stuff like that. So that's gonna be for um, next week, Bill will come. And then the week after that, we'll start a new Sabbath school class up here. So you'll come for Sabbath school and just come up here and we'll sit and we'll dialogue there. And, and again, um, the two things for Sabbath school that I believe is most important, the study of our lessons and the offerings that come. This is 13th Sabbath today, and we'll, we are um, on the uh, Southern Asian Division. You want to give generously. You don't, I, I think a lot of us don't understand, unless you've traveled abroad and stuff like that, how valuable our money is to these countries that are challenged with finances and poverty and so forth. A buck can, can change the life of an individual for a day or two easily. When we put 10, 20 bucks in there and we do that all together, we change whole communities. And that, that should be one of the, the two goals that we have for Sabbath School, study and your own personal relationship with God and the financial aspect in changing lives around the world. You don't have to be a missionary and go to Cambodia. You can do it right here by giving 20 bucks, 10 bucks, 50 cents, you know, but give. You need, I don't know if you need to give, but I need to give to be a part of this Sabbath school, this part of this life with God, right? Okay. Um, Keith, you got anything? Uh, no, I think you said it all. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I really appreciated all this time that God gave us in this manner. Oh, the other thing is too, Clark, Pastor Clark is going to uh, um, have a virtual in this room back here. They have it all set up, so you still will be able to zoom in. You'll still be able to, actually you'll be able to participate more easily with the Zoom program, okay? And I'm hoping he's gonna mention a little bit more about it um, come in this, the service. So that entity is still there. We're still reaching out to the world with uh, the Renton Seventh-day Adventist message, the quarterly message and so forth, and you'll be able to interact with that. So those who are out there um, know, uh, well, I want you to come to church if you can, but if you can't, you're still gonna be able to participate, okay? All right? I can't believe we got two minutes. There's no way. Okay, so just, I got a question back here too. I want to read this in the uh, further thoughts. 
No amount of human enthusiasm will ever stand up to the strain that waiting will impose upon our frail self. Only one thing will bear the strain, and that is abiding in Jesus Christ, namely a personal relationship with him. Um, what does a personal relationship with Jesus Christ look like? He doesn't leave your thoughts, right? He's, he's, he's in your thoughts all the time, I think. This, I mean, I'll just tell for me, reading, wanting to know him more, um, wanting to know what his will is for your life, um, desiring his, his life in your life, his character in you, um, believing in the salvation and the promises that he has, um, living by faith, again, I believe, is this um, personal relationship that we have with God, sharing the good news with those around us, whether it's intentional or just living a life that is uh, governed and guided by God, praying in the morning, asking God to come into your life and thanking him at night, whether it's brief or an intense thanking or a brief or intense prayer in the morning, these, I believe, are um, the fruits or the attributes of an individual that has a relationship with Jesus Christ. And new relationships, um, accepting the call. When the invitation is given, these new relationships with God, just continue to want to know him, continue to nurture that spark and fan it into a saving relationship with him. Okay? All right. Keith, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, from thy high and lofty place, we bid thee come and bless us with your presence, we ask. Bless and keep and be with all the participants of this 11 o'clock hour, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Alex attended the only Seventh-day Adventist school on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. These islands sit in the Bay of Bengal. They are part of India, even though they sit closer to Southeast Asian countries of Myanmar and Indonesia. Alex has fond memories of learning at this island school. I love teacher, teachers in this school because they, they, were teach, they teach me very kindly. The school's curriculum is based on the Bible. They only have three teachers, but what they lack in quantity, they make up for in quality of teaching. The school starts with prayer, then after that, uh, before they are going to classes, they starts with the, um, some story related to Bible. So that they, after telling that, they will teach them one memory verse every day. This school has a positive reputation in the community. Every parent wants to see their child succeed, which is why Alex's parents trusted the Adventist school to educate their son. Unfortunately, the school only offers nursery and preschool levels for kids. The students have to look for other education options once they finish preschool. Last year, we had 32 students. Among those, nine were graduated. That means they finished UKG, upper KG, then went to other school because we don't have the higher, higher studies. Then uh, primary school, we don't have. At his new school, Alex was required to attend class on the Sabbath. But thanks to his prior education, he was able to defend his faith to his teacher. I told to my teacher that uh, the fourth commandment is the uh, is, uh, we have to follow the Holy Sabbath. So I have to go to the Sabbath because I will obey to God. So I told to my teacher that uh, if I don't listen to my Lord, then how to how is is it possible to listen to you? So I have to go to church. After discussions between the teacher and Alex's parents, Alex now has the Sabbath off. Alex is not alone in facing the challenge of attending school on Sabbath. Other Adventist students face the same problem. That's why this quarter, we can help expand the Adventist school beyond preschool all the way through high school. Please pray for our church ministry in Andaman Nicobar Islands. All our church members pray for the an Adventist school in a higher level, that is, till up to high school, because all Adventist uh, children should continue their education here itself without any problem, without any difficulties. A portion of your 13th Sabbath offering this quarter 
will help build the new Seventh-day Adventist English school in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, providing a higher level of education so more people can learn about the love of Jesus. Thank you so much for supporting us through 13th Sabbath School Mission Offerings. everyone good morning listen I was teaching over the um, hall over there and I know the time was running away and I said man I gotta run over here and then I heard the music that playing so my apologies for you know we were with the young teens over there so forgive us happy Sabbath everyone you know I'm glad it's Sabbath because Otherwise, we would be, I would be involved in doing other stuff. I'll be elsewhere, and I guess most of you will be elsewhere otherwise. So I want to welcome each one here today in our house. I want to pray that God will be with each one. And as we've come, that the Lord will help us to um, put away the things that will bother us, put away the things that will cause us pain, will be cause us to be distracted, and uh, allow us to um, put on those things that will cause us to focus on Jesus. We need that, right? During the course of the week, we've been running and tossing about, getting up 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, going to work, Chris. Today is the Sabbath. Amen? Let's relax and be happy in Jesus. I want to welcome everyone. I want to welcome those online um, worshiping with us. Uh, we continue to um, solicit your, your presence and your prayers. And it makes our service um, so much more better. Welcome, Elder and family. Elder Albert Amen. and wife and son. Welcome. Smile. <laughs> yeah, we're happy that you guys could come and grace us with your presence. We appreciate you, okay? All right. Are there any other visitors in our midst today? Someone visiting for the first time? Anybody? Okay, if there's another such person, then welcome. I know we've got very special people here today. We've got a very special program. Um, you'll hear more about that as we go, so uh, welcome. I've got a little reading for you here today, just to calm our minds. It says, we bid you welcome, who come with weary spirit seeking rest, who come with troubles that are too much with you, who come hurt and afraid, we bid you welcome, who come with hope in your heart, who come with anticipation in your step, who come proud and joyous. We bid you welcome, who are seekers of new faith, who come to probe and explore, who come to learn. We bid you welcome, who enter this hall as a homecoming, who have found here room for your spirit, who find in this congregation a family. Whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever you are on your journey, we bid you welcome. Amen. Amen. Well, hope today you will have a wonderful and a blessed day. Okay, I've got a few announcements. For you today, um, the first one is there'll be a church business meeting this afternoon at 7:30 p.m. So the, all church members are invited to attend. It's really important. Pastor has um, information to share and for you to participate in. So church members, you're asked to be here at 7:30 um, this afternoon. Please be here. Okay. Um, Fellowship potluck has changed. It's not going to be the third Sabbath. It's going to be next week, the 6th of August. The re sorry, the 6th of April. <laughs> We're not in August yet. 
6th of April, Chris. Um, the reason being, we're going to be having um, a, uh, what do you call it? Um, the Voice of Prophecy, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. So come prepared next week for a padlock, okay? So the Voice of Prophecy will be next week as well, starting on Friday afternoon, Friday evening, into Sabbath, Sabbath whole day. Um, Sabbath school will be a little bit different as well. Um, we're going to be having one class except for the children. So everyone, everyone's going to be here. Um, Pastor Bill Payne will be here. So you're invited to be here when Friday evening, I believe it's at 7, it's all in the bulletin, 7 p.m. to share in that worship session and all day Sabbath. So please be here. Bring your special food because our potluck, in this church is the best anywhere in the Pacific Northwest. You know that. Renton's potluck. Bring your best food. Okay. All right. Um, and fourthly, um, last, last week um, you picked up a folder from Jane. And Pastor wants to have us do that spiritual gift inventory. Um, some people picked up and some people did not pick up. So Jane still has those folders. Um, with those questionnaires, we're asking you, if you did not pick up one last week, please pick up one from Jane at the front today to have it completed and turned back in. And lastly, um, Pastor um, is doing a camp meeting, choir, and he's soliciting people to sign up. If you sing, play an instrument, I'm going to ask um, Alan and um, Samson with your clipboard to come, come forward. Um, We've got a clipboard here. We're going to pass it around. If you sing, play an instrument, or want to perform on the choir, he's trying to build a choir for a camp meeting in, 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 in June. Um, and so we're going to pass the clipboard around. Write your name, your email address, and what you do. Just raise your hands if you need it, and we'll pass it around, OK? Um, it's not for you to take home. Um, if you sing, play an instrument, um, there's a spot for you to write it down so that you can have that. Um, okay. All right. So that's all for the announcements for today. I hope you guys will have a blessed and wonderful day. Um, I'll give you a few minutes um, to have your hands raised and have you write, down, write those information down. So in the meantime, what you can do is to pass the board around, and gentlemen, you could wait at the back and pick it up. Um, so so um, Samson and Al, you could wait at the back, pass the clipboard down, and the one that gets to the back, then you pick it up. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Can I have the church standing, please? I invite you to stand as we have our call to worship. gather here today in your presence because you live and you've given to us the opportunity of new life. You've invited us into your presence covered in the righteousness of your dear son Jesus Christ. And I ask now that as we worship today that your grace will fill our hearts and you will restore the broken, heal the hurting, motivate those who may be discouraged, and may we all, at the end of the day, glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. 
Bringing in the shaves will be our opening in this morning. Please remain standing. Good morning, church family. Um, at this time, we need to prepare our hearts uh, to talk to God. And so at this time, if all that may and can, can we kneel? Dear Heavenly Father, our God, our Redeemer, the one who loves us extremely the most. Thank you for allowing us to be here with you today. Lord, we, we've been, we're so sidetracked by our busy lives, but we're asking that uh, we can calm our minds down and turn towards you and receive the blessing you have here for us today. And Lord, uh, there's been a lot of things go wrong this week for a lot of people. And one of the ones we are praying most for is that uh, all these uh, men of these families that were lost in the bridge accident, uh, Lord, they have to be lonely and in need of, uh, of you and they may not even know you, but we're asking that you keep your arm around them and keep them, uh, keep them, uh, in, in, 
it's so hard because we don't know what they're going through, but Lord, you know. Bless us here, Lord. We have, uh, most of us had a good week. We're alive and here, but some of us, some of them are not. Um, be with the sick and the hurting. Lord, you know every need there. You're our God. You know our minds. You know our hearts, and you know our, our will. Lord, um, keep us on the path that leads only upward towards you. And Lord, then we're thankful for the group that's going to uh, present you to us in music. Uh, bless them, guide and protect them, and uh, thank you for bringing them here. And Lord, most of all, uh, help us to keep our hearts and minds right with you. And uh, Lord, we want to be ready when you come. So help us in every way to do that. Thank you and praise you for being our God. In Jesus' name, amen. It is time for um, the offering, um, and so as we prepare, um, today's focus is on the local church budget. Um, as you know, as a church, um, we uh, are supported by our members, and uh, we have been blessed over the years from your support, and as you continue to support this church, uh, it will help to further the cause of God's kingdom here on earth. So we want to thank you for your um, contributions over the past years and weeks and months. And um, I believe today is no exception. And we're going to ask you to please continue to support our church as the church grows and support this community. Uh, there's a box at the back um, where you can deposit the offering. We have um, suspended collecting offering across the aisle. And so at any point in time, you can deposit the offering in that box, your tithe and offering, um, mostly when you're um, exiting, exi exiting the church. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so truly thankful for your many blessings in our lives. You have blessed us with, with uh, so many things. And, um, uh, and as we have come and want to return to you, we ask the God that we'll return our hearts to you first. We pray to God that you'll bless the offerings and the monies that will uh, be de delivered into this box and to your cause. We pray to God that as these monies are being used, that your work will, will, will spread far and wide and that people all over this world will come to know you as a result of our giving. Bless each one, dear God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. It is so good to see all of you. I hope you will pardon me for being a little extra excited today. Um, first, I want to add my word of welcome to Keepers of the Faith and the wonderful ministry that you have brought to this church today. Uh, we look forward to sharing in this experience with you. Thank you for taking the time to be here, and we look forward to it. I'm also excited because uh, a couple of friends of mine surprised me. I walked in today and saw the Allens, uh, Ed and Madeline Allen, are visiting with us today. And I'm using the word visiting cautiously, uh, just, just sparingly, because I know that they're eventually headed uh, this way. But, but Ed and Madeline became dear friends of my family and I. 
uh, my family and me at the, during my time of ministry at the College View Church in Lincoln. Um, Ed uh, has been a part of the educational uh, t um, team there at Union College, and maybe some of you have read or benefited from his scholarship that he's blessed our, our world church with. But we're glad to have both of you here today, and welcome to Renton. Uh, we look forward to, to um, seeing you more when the time is right. <laughs> Um, I would like now to invite forward uh, someone who is ready and willing to uh, express her faith and request acceptance into the membership of the Renton Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, most of you know Audrey, and so I'll just invite you forward at this time. Audrey is a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and has been active here for quite some time. And so we're just going to give her the opportunity. Um, it's always an exciting thing to declare what we believe in Jesus Christ, isn't it? So she has the opportunity to do that right now. And then I will extend the opportunity for you as a church to, um, to participate in this uh, request for membership here at this family. Audrey, we're so glad you're here. And we thank you for all the ways that you've been an active part of the life of this community. I'll just read a few of the statements on the back of the, uh, the, the certificate that we hand out to, um, to you, and um, I'll read just a few of them, phrasing them as questions for you just to respond to. Do you believe that there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? I do. Amen. We might actually get you a mic. That's all right. Yeah. The, I know we have so many more um, attending worship with us today that are not present in person, so they'd like to participate in that and hearing what we're saying today. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins? And do you believe that through faith in his shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? I do. Amen. Do you renounce the world and its sinful ways and have you accepted Jesus Christ? as your personal savior, believing that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? I do. Amen. The gospel-centered questions, and now we're welcoming you into this fellowship. Do you accept and believe the Seventh-day Adventist Church to be the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people from every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship? Do you desire to be a member of this local congregation of the World Church? I do. Amen. You have heard um, the answers and the desire of Audrey. Uh, is there a motion to accept Audrey into the fellowship of this church? Moved and seconded. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed may use the same sign. It is carried. Welcome, Audrey. Thank we are you. so glad you're a part of the family here at Renton. Here. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll take the mic. Before I take my seat, the, the, the screen tells you why I'm here, and we've already been doing some of that, serving together. And we are a, a family. I believe that everybody here is an important part of this church family. If you are visiting, yes, you too are an important part of this family, and we're so glad that you're here. But I will address very briefly the members of this church tonight. We're going to be having a very special gathering. It's a business meeting. And uh, somehow, over time, uh, it's become a thought in many churches that the business meeting is, oh, just that thing, and we won't bother with it. But, but, but here's the thing, here's the thing. And I, I was thinking about um, a story in the scriptures. I won't be long, because we've got, we've got beautiful music to listen to today. But I was thinking about a scripture in the Old Testament. doesn't have specifics to do with business meetings, but then it does. Jehoshaphat, in 2 Chronicles 20, uh, realized that there was a huge army coming up against him and the people of Judah. So as a leader, he assembled the people together. And he did that much as leader. What happened next is he invited them all to prayerfully pursue God's plan for the people. And God made a very interesting decision. God impressed upon the heart of somebody named Jehaziel somewhere in the middle of the crowd to get up and say, here's what the Lord is impressing for me to share with you. 
What I'm saying is, sometimes we might be in a form as a church to sit and look at the front and maybe God is impressing the pastor with all the plans. Maybe God is impressing the elder with all of the plans. But somehow God has a way of moving among the people. And I would like all of you to be a part of this prayerful conversation because I know God is not just talking to me. God is going to impress somebody else somewhere in this business meeting to share a valuable insight that would not come from me, wouldn't come from another one of our elders, but God is using you to be an important part of the life of this church. So please plan to be here, not just listen, but be prayerful. What is God impressing me to share? How is God impressing me to participate? Um, we're going to begin at 7.30 tonight. Um, and we'll be right here in the sanctuary. I know, I know that it's not possible for everyone to be here, but I am so passionate about this being a corporate opportunity that we have an online way for you to be a part of this as well if you can't be here. Now, those online will not be able to vote, so I do hope many of you will choose to be here in person so you can be in the discussion and in the voting. Those online will be able to discuss, though. If you have points to share, the opportunity is yours to, to participate there. If you don't yet know how to get in, by the way, let me just see. Is there anyone here who doesn't know how to get into that meeting if you're online? Oh, good. Then most of you saw the email. Did somebody see an email from Jane this week with a link? To, okay, you saw it. Just, okay, a couple of you, okay. A few of you saw it. The rest of you are like, I'm just not gonna put my hand up for anything. Um, <laughs> but, but please join that, join that link that way or just be here in person to be a part of the business meeting tonight. Uh, great things to look ahead to and I'm excited to see how God impresses us to move forward together. God bless you as we move forward now in worship. Good morning, church. Welcome and happy Sabbath to all of you. You're going to be blessed this, this morning for our worship service. Those online, um, you've been uh, definitely been told uh, throughout the week, the uh, last few days of the week, rather. But uh, for those who are here for the first time, on November 22nd of 2022, Keepers of the Faith was here, and they share their music ministry with us. Uh, so if you missed it, you get the privilege of enjoying it today. Back then, there were some new faces that I did not recognize. I noticed the one is missing, and I was told that he's staying uh, with a young one that just came uh, into their dwelling. And so uh, he's been um, taking a leave of absence for right now. Anyway, there are four vocalists who love to serve God with their talents of singing. They will introduce themselves a little bit later. Keepers of the Faith began um, a few years back. In fact, their ministry began with prison ministry as a whole. And uh, they would visit brothers and sisters um, who were locked up and shunned from society. And they have that deep South Island flavor, a taste of the oldy but goody, and the soul of saved men and women to, to a genre of Southern gospel quartet music. Uh, so you'll hear that this morning. And it is hope, their hope and their prayer that as they seeing that there will be a reflection of Jesus within the aspect of the ministry as you listen to them. So Ace is the main man right here, as far as I know. Uh, Ace uh, is sitting down uh, in a specific chair. And at last, I, I didn't expect to see you, Ace, but you're here because of Jesus. Uh, and uh, he is... Uh, been with the group? In fact, it was it you that started it, or oh, it was Big Brother. I was is this Big Brother here? Yeah, right. I got it right. Yeah, this Big Brother started this whole thing, and and so right now I'm going to turn this service over to 
this wonderful group, and you will be blessed.
down here my burden's heavy And the road seems rough and long Sometimes my feet get weary and so slow
How many of you are thankful that you came this morning? Jesus is alive. You don't sound convincing. I said Jesus is alive. He's not in the grave. He's alive. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say what? And it says, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Also said in the word of God, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. I don't know about you, but we got a lot to be thankful for. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. That's what we came to do this Sabbath morning. For the Lord is a great God, it says. Why? Because he is a great king above all gods. How many of you are thankful you came to church? Did you come to church because it's tradition? Did you come to church because you want to be showed off? Your new dress, your new suit? To be entertained? But you came to worship the God, expecting him to speak to you this morning. Gathering with the saints from wherever you come from, people who love Jesus. We need to come to Jesus this morning and be thankful. The world is celebrating. But how many are thankful, truly thankful, that Jesus rose again? I'm thankful to God that he given us life. But because of his death, we all have a second chance of spending eternity with him. Amen. How many messed up people we have here this morning? Messed up people. Every hand in this building should go up. If you're a perfect person, then please stand up. You see, my Bible and my Bible says to people that are messed up, do you understand that Jesus, only Jesus can turn your messed up life into a message? Your testimony that you have every single day, all the tests that you've been through in your life, he can turn it into a testimony. All the trials that you've been through in your life, I don't know about you, but I've been through so many. But thank God he can turn our trials into triumphant things in our life. Amen. And from you, from being a victim, from all the struggles and all the battles that you have to fight, I'm here to tell you, God can turn you from being a victim into a victorious person. That's the Jesus I serve. How about you? The Bible says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Why? Because his love endures forever. Be thankful in all circumstances, the Bible says. All it didn't say one, two. It says all. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. How many of you belong to Christ Jesus this morning? You see, too many of us people that claim to be Christians, we worry a lot. We worry so much about finances, marriages, problems in, with the kids, or just being alive. There's so much stress in our minds. In our lives, I got, I got news for you this morning. The Bible says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And tell God what you need. Most of all, thank him. Thank him for all that he's done for you and me. The Bible says, look to the Lord. And seek his face always. Amen. If my people who are called by my name, it says, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's the key. Turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from him or from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. What do you say, church? I'm so thankful for the goodness of God. How about you? I'm so thankful that I'm alive. I didn't realize that Pastor Brother Dave, Elder Dave, talked about we were here in November of 22. And he said he wasn't thinking that he's going to see me again. Well, I got news. Only God can do the impossible. 
You and I are here for a reason. We should be thankful for the God, amen, for his goodness and mercy that he shows us every day. Listen to this song as my niece and my nephew sings the goodness of God. Sometimes church and family, God allows things to come into our life for a reason. You see, everything that God allows to come our way and into our lives is always with a purpose. Always with a purpose. He uses even the greatest errors and deepest pain in our lives to mold us and to make us into a better person. Amen. God is always in control. Even though when the things around us in the world may be in turmoil. Understand this family. The God of heaven was never caught off guard. He remains unmovable and unshakable. He sees and he hears and he understands what you and I face each and every day of our lives. Amen. The good news is he will deliver us. We need to trust him. Even when times are going bad for us. And don't you understand that through trials, God is trying to speak to you. God is trying to draw you closer to him. Amen. It is those trials that will bring you closer to Jesus. Understand that through it all, no matter what it is, how big, small, medium it is, you can always, always depend on God's word. And that through it all, you can trust 
in Jesus. Listen to this old song. I've had many tears and sorrow. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong. storms he brought me through for if I never had a problem I wouldn't know that God could solve them and I wouldn't know what faith in God can do I know you know this song, sing with us this whole class, through it all Try to speak faith, 
Never give that old devil It's to get in to worship and praise Let everybody know just where I stand On the back of my ride Is a fish and a cross for world to see I know God is good all the time He's been so good to me But sometimes I It's a whole world of song, but sometimes alone I cry. You know, church, there's going to come a time in your life. If you know Jesus or you don't know Jesus, or you're struggling a little bit. There's going to come a time in your life that you're going to have to make a decision. A decision when you come to that crossroads, you're going to have to make that turn. And I know that there's a lot of noises going around you. Telling you to go this way, that way. It'll be alright. You'll get all of this stuff if you come this way. And I know that the the distraction of the world has a tendency to draw young people and all kinds of people to that. But I pray, it's our prayer this morning that through the songs and through the sharing of God's word this morning that you will hear from on high. That he, his voice, will draw you to him. Amen. We've all up here made a mistake one time in our lives, many times I could say. But we came to a crossroads where we had to make that decision. Which way are we going to go? I'm here to tell you, praise the Lord for second chances. Praise the Lord that we made the turn towards Jesus. Amen. Sometimes when we be thinking that we're going all right, we're going to the right direction. And all of a sudden something hits you. And you're going to have to make a decision. It is our prayer this morning that you take that turn for Jesus. Amen? It's not hard. It may seem hard. Trust me when I say this. Life is hard. But Jesus will make things a lot easier for you. Listen to this song. It's a brand new song for us. It's the title track of our new album. Simply tells you the message of taking that turn. Well, life 
mountain and curve And on this road of life for soul and we and her But still today There's hope to be found And it's found in Jesus Christ the church saying to yourself it can't be done it's too hard your brother it can't be done I got news for you there are people on this stage right now that have been going through some things in their lives have gone through some things in their lives like for example the brother that's tickling the ivory come from a hard life when he was growing up Come from a life that filled with alcohol, with all kinds of things that he's done in his young life. But praise the Lord, God stepped in. And you got two young people on this stage that they're thinking to themselves that there is no hope. That they're not lovable or not able to be loved by somebody. Thinking they're not beautiful enough thinking that there's no hope for them because they got too much problems. Got to the point when one took the car, tried to end his life by hitting a telephone pole. And you got another slicing herself up, thinking that there's no hope. But praise the Lord that Jesus is alive, that he stepped in, and he prevented them from taking their own lives. Then you got two young men that are up here that did so many terrible things in their long, their young lives, raised up in the church of God, thinking there was no hope for them. They've gone too deep in sin, went to the prisons, locked up, thinking there's no hope. Oh, but Jesus stepped in. God took took over our lives. Look what he can do if you surrender all to Jesus. I don't know where you are in your life. You may think that you're all alone. That you don't know or we don't understand what you're dealing with. I got news for you. We do. Because we've been there. All it, is, all it needs for you to do is make that decision right now to surrender all to Jesus. I want you to listen to the song. We met the songwriter a long time ago, but my niece finally met this guy that wrote this song. And it had become her testimony, testimonial song. 
and I want you to listen to her sing tell you the good news that you're never alone listen to the maker of the rain Seems to get the best of you. Your problems are piled so high, the weight is so heavy. So I even try. says I'll always be the same just remember he's the maker of the rain like I said before I've been there too but now Standing on this mountain says I'll always be the same just remember he's the maker of the rain friend don't be discouraged just remember what he said when you're walking through that downpour there is sunshine up ahead Just remember he's the maker of the rain. Just remember he's the maker of the rain. Just remember he's the maker of the rain.
How many of you are thankful you came this morning? How many are enjoying yourselves? Pastor Clark, thank you so much, brother, for allowing us to come just to be a blessing. We're no strangers to our church here. For many years we've been coming. And we've been around in this conference for a while. And we've been doing ministry for 26 years. And trust me when I say this, God, when you think that you're all alone and you're thinking that there's, where's all the, the help going to come from? I got news for you. God shows up all the time. And for 26 years, we've been going all over the United States, all over Canada, South Pacific at one point in time. Just pretty simply going around telling people the good news. What is that good news? That God is still in the business of performing miracles. God wants to do a miracle for you today. But because of his death, you and I have that, been given that miracle of second chance. Amen? And I just want to make an encouragement to y'all. I don't know how it's going to play out, but by the end of the program, in a little bit, I just want to make an appeal that this ministry want to keep going. We have a calling on our lives to keep sharing the gospel. Whether it's through music, whether it's through sharing the word of God, we believe God has called us to the ministry. And if you believe in this ministry and you want to keep, it, keep seeing it going and winning as many souls for the kingdom, you want to keep seeing that and be a part of it today. By the end of the program, there will be an offering. I make an appeal to all our people. Normally, we would have our CDs up in our program whenever we do something for Jesus. But we're not going to do it on the Sabbath of the Lord. But if, if by any chance, you love the music. How many of you love the music here? Raise your hands. And if you love the music and you want to enjoy the keepers of the faith, wherever you go when you're traveling, to work, to school, you're just traveling in your car, cruising around, you want to enjoy more music of the keepers of the faith, just ask one of our family members back there and they'll have a card for you. And if you're not prepared for the offering this morning, a special offering, I pray that you take one of our cards that you can also make a kind contribution or donation online. Go to our website and you can do all of that. Simply, if you came prepared for it, I'm going to make a plea, special plea to God. God's ministry needs your help. In order for make, to make this thing function and keep going for Jesus, there's this thing or this two that we need, and it's called money. And we don't like talking about it because we know God takes care of all our needs, amen? But he needs the help. So if you believe in this ministry and you want to help out, please, at the end of the program, kindly make that contribution. But as we continue in singing our last two numbers here this morning, uh, I just want to encourage you all that because of Jesus and his death and resurrection, we have the hope of seeing all our loved ones again. Amen? I know he's not prepared. It's early in the morning, but it's already afternoon, but I'm going to have him sing it anyways. My nephew, as he sings this old classic that has become a favorite of mine, listen to it. Surrounded by your 
glory Word will my heart feel Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your breath? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever God been good to you this morning. On behalf of Keepers of Faith Ministry, we want to thank you so much. Thank the Pastor, and his elders, and most of all, I want to thank all of you for giving us this golden opportunity just to be a blessing as much as you are a blessing to us. Just by your presence alone means a lot to us. I can remember in our upbringing and in our humble beginnings of starting this ministry, we only had two people in the audience. God is good <laughs> and uh, you know when you walk away from God the round trip is only one step there are two days in a year that you and I cannot do anything the first one is yesterday the second one is tomorrow so today is the right day to love somebody. Today is the right day to forgive somebody. Today is the right day to trust in Jesus. Today is the right day is to believe in the promises of God's word. Today is the right day to make it right with your fellow man. I don't know what you came through those doors. You know, every religion, there's so many. You have the Hindus, the Muslim, agnostic, confusion, and you have the Christianity. The 
The only one stands out the most is the Christianity. Why I say that is because the leader died for their followers. This is not a knock on the Muslim. Those are our brothers and sisters as well. And sometimes, you know, the most misunderstood person in this whole world is Jesus. We still didn't get it right. That's why we have a lot of questions and confused. And I'm so thankful that they're going back to the lesson again in next quarter, the great controversy of where everything has started. For us to understand why we are in this mess. Because we're still playing that, playing that blame game. And covering up all the things in life. There are two words that is hated and most hated in the world. The first word is no. And the second one is wait. And we just talked about that this morning. I bet you all of us, we don't like waiting. Trust me, go stand in the grocery line in a long night and try to wait. Or even waiting for a doctor's appointment. Or even waiting in the traffic. It shows you who you really are. Amen. It's one thing to talk about all the things we have heard this morning. It's another thing to live it. And waiting is one of the most valuable tools God has given us. But we're the kind of people that we want everything in a hurry. That's why you have fast food and nobody longer linger in the, the teller anymore. They have these ATM machines. Bad enough, you have your phone and you just hit a button and the World Wide Web is right in front of you. Everything is so convenient. But it was never convenient for Jesus when he went to the cross. In his most inconvenient time, Jesus showed up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in their most inconvenient time Jesus showed up after 40 years in the wilderness God showed up even though they waited so long Abraham for 40 years and he still wanted to assist and try to you know, be before God and answer his prayer by having that child, but God showed up. Mary and Joseph kind of doubted that if they're going to have that son, God still showed up. Noah waited for the flood, like the rain to come. And God showed up. In his most inconvenient time, Joseph became the second man in charge of all of Egypt. You see, God promotes us when we are in our inconvenient time. Not when everything is convenient. And on the cross, in his most inconvenient time, the world is celebrating But God gave up his only son for you and me. What love. If God had a reason to love you and me, man, we're in big trouble. But there's no reason you can find in the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. He doesn't tell you why he loves you. That's, that's just who he is. Why did you come here this morning? Were you led by the spirit of God to come? 
You know, we like to hear those, come as you are. Amen. And you can come as you are. But I got news for you. He won't leave you as you are. So expect a transformation. Something is about to happen in your life right where, you are, where you're sitting at. Just look to Jesus. He will make it happen. How long you been in the church? 2023 is gone. What is it that in 2024 you're going to be different about? That it's going to be an impact to the world. Well, let alone we have a church right here. And there's a lot of church around our community here. What makes you different from them? Is it the Sabbath? Oh, come on now. There's much more than the Sabbath. People need to see Jesus. One of the things I find interesting about this man named Jesus. And how he made an impact in the whole world. That multitude follow him. You know I was amazed by when one of my brothers was sharing. He was driving picking up his kids from Auburn Academy. And he came through the Muckleshoot. He seen the sign. Man, and he saw all the cars going in. So much people. And he said, you know, to his kids, man, we can't compete with the world. Because we have our sign up. And not that much people flocking in. But Jesus, in his time, there had a lot of entertainment going on. Games going on. People celebrating here and there. People going here to and fro. But when he showed up, everybody stopped everything and flocked to him. One of the reasons why God allowed us to wait so that he can respond to us in such a way that we have to come up to a level of maturity in our own experience that our lifestyle match what we teach and preach that he can start working in miracle in our lives I challenge you church this morning we all need Jesus amen so as you face this new week that is about to approach us as the sun set grab something this morning that you can take to go against the devil during the week and use that I don't know what it is but you're here for a purpose and a reason and a meaning in life amen so listen as we close with this song you know I'm thankful that we serve a God who who has redeemed all of us amen how many of you believe you're redeemed Oh, not many hands went up. So the other one's still confused. How many of you believe you're redeemed? Amen. I want you to listen to this song. It's entitled, I Am Redeemed. It's a powerful song. I just want you to listen to the words as we close this morning. Again, thank you so much. And if you feel impressed by the Spirit of God, again, like my brother shared, we need your help and support. If not, it's okay. God bless you. And thank you for being here this morning and allowing us to come and be a blessing to you. And most of all, just remember this. Jesus loves you. And I'm going to say it again. Jesus loves you. And so do we. God bless you. Thank you. Father's
wonderful time together and I believe that God has spoken to someone's heart today through this vehicle of music and the ministry that has been shared with us by the keepers of the faith. I don't know if you heard it but they started and ended on the note of the one who has saved us. They started by pointing us to the cross of Jesus Christ and made sure if you didn't get it that you through his sacrifice have been redeemed. And I hope that you will take this message today and may it reside richly in your hearts and may you thereby be a blessing to someone else as well. I want to um, underscore what has been shared by this ministry and let you know that if you have been so moved to uh, support this ministry and have them move forward, anybody want to see them sing another time in another space for God's glory? You want to stand behind them and say, we stand in support of what you are doing. We are fellow missionaries of the gospel of the kingdom. If you have love offerings that you want to make uh, directly to them, we're wanting to be sure that what you intend is where it goes. And so there's going to be baskets at the back. The deacons will have baskets. You know the regular format we have right now for your offerings, your tithing offerings in the box at the back. 
you can still place those there. But specifically, the offerings you're making to this ministry, please put those in the baskets that the deacons are holding at the back. And we'll be sure that uh, your, your love offerings will go to support the keepers of the faith as you designate it that way. I also want to remind you that on the tail of this powerful reminder of the gospel, uh, as our mission is to be changed by Christ, to change the world, we're going to be continuing next week with another special gathering in this church. We're going to be trained and equipped and go through some powerful uh, workshops for evangelism, Bible study, Sabbath school revitalization, small groups. And I want to just remind you, the reason I'm sharing this now is that Sabbath school time will look a little bit different next week. Please come on out at the Sabbath school time and we will have uh, Dr. Bill Payne from The Voice of Prophecy sharing during that uh, hour. And then from there, our Sabbath school time has another slight modification that will not affect you except that it will increase your engagement in the Sabbath school experience. Here in this um, building and also online, we'll talk more about that at the business meeting tonight. But again, I remind you, as you're on your way out today, uh, be sure to note the different locations uh, for those who wish to make uh, contributions uh, both to this church and to the keepers of the faith. As we prepare for a word of blessing, I invite all of you to stand to your feet and we will share now in this closing benediction. I borrow at this time from the words of Paul to the Ephesian church, having heard a lot of the gospel today. Paul says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth, I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Let all God's people say together, amen, amen.